And thanks for joining us on a very special edition of Two Guys and a Lot of Wine. I'm Bobby P. And I'm Rocky Allen. And we're going to be doing something we haven't done ever in almost over nine years of this show, Rocky. We're going to be doing Australian wines. Australian wines. So from the Australian Outback to the Bobby P's Backyard Outback, we have <laughs> six, we have seven wines on this table, both from Assy Lebro and Sandy Holland will be joining us to drink these wines. And Essie, thank you for bringing your wines on the show. You're welcome. And this is exciting. We've never done this many wines. Yes. I don't even know where to begin. So we will actually be beginning with the Riesling. So, Rock, Rocky, what can you tell us on this first wine? By the way, we promise no bad uh, Australian accents today. Why so, can't you? Uh, no, no, I, so this is from uh, Eden Valley. Uh, Eden Valley is, uh, so if you think about Australia, it's roughly the size of the United States. So you want to say there's southern Australia, and southern Australia is roughly where about the panhandle of Florida would be. So Eden Valley is kind of, if you go up and a little bit to the east, uh, there's a place called Barossa, and we're going to be doing a couple of reds from Barossa, and a place called Eden Valley is just to the east of Barossa. If you go to the north of there, there's the Clare Valley. Clare Valley and Eden Valley are the two spots in Australia that are known for Riesling, and it's some of the driest Rieslings in the world. People think about Riesling, you know, they think about just sweet. Uh, um, a lot of the Rieslings from Germany are pretty sweet. Most of the Rieslings from California are really sweet, but you get into the Rieslings front that they make in Australia, and they are bone dry. And so, um, Clare Valley, a little more popular for the Rieslings. Eden Valley, a little bit smaller of an area. I've only had one in my lifetime. This will make two. So I'm curious to see and what it's going to taste like. Puseyvale? How's that pronounced? I'm sorry? Puseyvale or Puseyvale? Uh, that much I don't know. I'm, I'm going to guess it's Pusey. Okay? Pusey? <laughs> Crocky. I got a sip. This is <laughs> almost like a summer block. It's, uh... I, you know... So Clare Valley is famous for having, if you've seen the movie Psalm, they talk about it smells like a freshly opened can of tennis balls or a cut garden hose. I don't really get, when I smell this, I get a little bit of like a kind of a diesel-y, diesel fuel quality. It's, that a little gasoline you, Yeah, a little gasoline a little uh, kind of petrol, they say. Uh, but um, it typically doesn't taste the way it smells, so let's, let's dig right in. Definitely tastes better than it smells. Yeah, yeah I don't <laughs> taste... The gasoline. Definitely dry. <laughs> yeah. It is bone dry. So, yeah, and not sweet at all. And one cool thing, if you look on that bottle, and it's, there's no way we could zoom in for the um, for the viewing audience, but Rieslings, there's a, a federation called the International Riesling Federation. And what they do is they have a little scale from dry to sweet. And if you look on some Riesling bottles, and particularly the ones from Australia, all, all have them, it'll show you a little dot where it is on the sweet to dry scale. Yeah, you can see it right there. Way down there. Way down on the dry end, yeah. And so uh, that's if, you, if you're if you into Riesling but you don't like the sweet ones, try to find one that's got the IRF designation right there on the bottle. That's a pretty cool way to, to get around some of the sweet ones. And if you want the sweet ones, you can also find it that way. Uh, I this know a is, lot of this is a good summer wine. I mean, it's mm -hmm. 70 degrees out tonight, beautiful West Hartford, and uh, this is a perfect wine to be drinking right now. Yeah, the, the fruit, I guess, would be lemon, lime kind of mm -hmm. thing. Anything else you find in there, you really don't get into, like, the floral aspects that you mm -hmm. get in a lot of racings. You really don't get into a lot of the peachy Deck stuff. wine. It's deck yeah. wine. It's I guarantee like you a lot of people basic. who weren't familiar with this would think it's a Sauvignon Blanc. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people yeah. who uh, are familiar with Rieslings and yeah. the dry and sweet scale would mm -hmm. probably think this is a Sauvignon Blanc. Yep. It's got that crispness to it that mm -hmm. you get out of Sauvignon Blanc. And what's the price point on that, Rob? Uh, this one was in between $16 and $18. I got this at Yankee Spirits in Sturbridge. It is really <coughs> difficult to find. We wanted to do Australian. Mm -hmm. It's difficult to find Australian whites that are not Chardonnay. Very difficult. Because so, actually the one was, I have tonight one. is actually a Chardonnay. And... Um, I'm kind of curious. I've never tasted it. I brought this blind. I also went into Total Wine. I asked the guy for something, uh, a white wine. There wasn't a lot to choose from. Yeah. So I went with a Chardonnay. Yeah. So I'm very curious when I get to that one, how, whether I'm going to like that, because generally I don't. But I like the reason. I'm going to give that a thumbs up. Definitely question, no question about it. Yeah. Oh, thumbs up for me, too. <laughs> I like it if I can get beyond the smell. <laughs> That's how I, I feel the exact same way. <laughs> All right. That's a good, good, good start. Good okay. start. Now, I think the next wine is going to be an S.E. Lebrun. Yes, uh, yes. Um, and I don't pick wines um, uh, by flavor because I know nothing about wines, but I do know in Australia, most deadly snakes, most deadly spiders, <laughs> and most deadly sharks. So it's so not a place going. that I'm going to write <laughs> this. Sandy and I are not going to go there, but <laughs> it's a beautiful country. And this is uh, Samillon, um, which is a golden grape. And... It's on the, um, well, I'm going to let you try it. It's in, it's in, um, 
smaller glass. And it should help. It's Semillon, or some people might say Semillon, but it's French, so Semillon is the wine wine tasters call it Semillon. It's a little tart. It is tart. I was expecting it to be like peachy and kind of sweet. It's got the citrusy tartness. Yeah. And it's got a quick finish. I like that. I like it. When they uh, blend, they, they, they uh, in the um, Bordeaux region, the whites are mostly Simeon and uh, mm-hmm. Sauvignon Blanc, and they blend them together. And they'll throw some of this in there to kind of give it a little bit more of a toned down, like a peachy uh, thing. I was expecting it to be a mouthful of peaches, and it's really not. It's a crisp, tasty. Again, I could sit there. I wouldn't even have to have this with food. I could drink it by itself. What do you think of the temperature? Are we, are we good with the temperature? It's been sitting out about 20, 25 minutes. I, I can't answer that. That is such a subjective question. Are I'm you gonna, happy with the way it tastes I, right now? I tend to drink my wines, my white wines, way too cold. Uh, that's just a personal preference. I wouldn't recommend if I was if I was mm-hmm. working in a restaurant. I wouldn't recommend. Now, <laughs> what's know, inter- it what it's what uh, I read about this wine is that mm-hmm. it's got a nice crisp flavor, tart when it's a young wine. But if you keep it like for five years, it develops mm-hmm. an oakier, oh, more st- yeah, which is interesting. In, but uh, I like it the way it too. is. I mean, this is uh, what twenty eighteen, um, but it actually. As it gets older, it, its flavor changes, mm-hmm. which I, believe, I, I think it's the flavor or the, the the chill factor that it is right now is perfectly acceptable mm-hmm. for me. Mm-hmm. I, I, mean, think it's I would chill fun. it just a little bit more for me. Yeah, because you're a cold woman. <laughs> <laughs> I like it cold too. Yeah. I like it cold. So you wanted to try this side by side with yes, yes, because now we have a true kind of a Bordeaux-ish. What they're going for is the Simeon, the Sauvignon Blanc. <laughs> That's what they do in the, the, the Entree de Mer region of Bordeaux a lot. And so I'm kind of curious to taste these side by side to see if you can tell the difference. Typically, you know, Sauvignon Blanc is going to have that grapefruit, kind of grassy characteristic, especially if it comes from New Zealand. This is not New Zealand. It's, it's got pretty the darn close it's got to New the Zealand. So, uh, and Jim, so we really pre-poured really these early just to get through these wines. But So, Rocky, this one that we're trying is a... Um, I a wanna snake s- and herring. Snake right. and herring, yeah. See, there's the snakes. <laughs> Yeah, and these are all available locally. <laughs> well, yours was from uh, um, over the border in Massachusetts. Uh, this one was from um, Total Wine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The uh, Riesling too. No, the Riesling, Riesling was from um, Yankee. Yankee Yankee Spirits. Okay. Yeah. That was the only places that I could find white wines that weren't Chardonnay. It wasn't easy. They're, they're yeah, it's tough to find. But nonetheless, good. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's different. That's a little aftertaste for me. Yeah, well, that I, I, don't I don't like. I don't like it that much. It was. <laughs> what, uh, it what was is a little aftertaste? I'm not. It's not clear. It's not clear. That we, had, we, we had tried this the other day, um, and it's got kind of a fishy quality to me. Hmm. And I don't know if that was put in my head because the name, you know, is snake and herring, and I'm, you know, maybe tasting herring but i definitely get a fishy quality in this wine which is not something i want in my wine it has well, an unusual smell too I, i'm going to disclose Fish. for full disclosure <laughs> sandy admitted that she did not like this wine going into the, the remaining of this bottle it's only been open what several days uh, a couple of days which is fine i think for white wine yeah. it's refrigerated yeah, I, I think I know where you're going with, Sandy, in regards to the aftertaste. I'm not going to go as far as say I don't like it, but I think the aftertaste is a little too pronounced and a too, mm-hmm. too lingering. So it's not a food one, I don't think. No. I think uh, if you're just sitting out and just having a sip or two, it's fine. But I don't know what even to eat that with or what right. you would eat with that. You know what this tastes like to me is lemon pledge. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of got this just furniture like polish. oily <laughs> furniture polish kind of thing going on with it. It just doesn't... It, 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 I would pin it Argentinian Tarantes, which has kind of got that just oily, kind of waxy, hmm. uh, almost Tupperware finish thing going on. It's not It's not for me. And uh, this actually is available, uh, it's one of the few wines, white wines you can get at Total Wine. It's, it's not a cheap wine actually, right? It's just about almost $20. Uh, it was right around the $20 mark, yeah. So yeah. it's going to be an acquired taste, I mm-hmm. think. Yeah, I think absolutely. people who like white wine in general, it's, it's going to be a... a the flip of the coin. You Very sour. Like if it. you like tart, this has got a lot of mm-hmm. tartness to it. I'm only butter. going to give it like a half thumb. I don't hate it as much as Sandy. I don't know where everybody else stands. I'm going to probably yeah. give it a maybe like yeah, somewhere around in. like yeah. five o'clock. It's not all the way a thumbs down, but it's <laughs> not really compared a thumb. to the compared to the semi. Yeah, I, it's, it, you it's know, hard, doing yeah. those side by side, yeah, yeah. you just yeah. it's no comparison. But. 
I, I always say a wine like this is good if you're not eating anything. You're sitting out on a nice like nice night a nice night like tonight, or if it's not too hot, and you're just in a conversation. You want to drink really slow. Mm. Tiny Make sure to drink slow. <laughs> That's about what I would say. <laughs> Drinking slow? <laughs> By the way, can I give a little uh, plug here? I had these wine glasses made, and uh -huh. the place that made these wine glasses is called My Personal Memories. They're on Amazon, and the reason I want to give them a plug is because it says, you can't see it because it's etched in. There's no way I can. But it says, two guys and a lot of wine. It says WHC-TV. The first set that they sent me said WHC-TC, so they messed it up. But when I contacted them, they immediately sent me an email with a tracking number saying, we just fixed it. They're, they're on their way. And so these are the correct ones. They are, uh, again, it is uh, my personal memory. So that was a really, I figured I'd like to give them a plug. And they're beautiful. Thank you very much. Love these. Love these. I have yeah, and they weren't very expensive either. So. I have to ask you an important question. Did they make you return the WHCC? No, we got them. No. All right, so we've, got, okay. we've got eight wine glasses <laughs> awesome. now okay. ready to go. So if we ever get like a B list and want to put eight, eight <laughs> people together, they're going to get the TC glasses. So. All right, so this is probably, uh, like I said, I think everybody's least favorite. Are, are you okay with me watering your lawn? Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're outside. Yeah, it says, give it a toss. Yeah, let's hope, that, uh, let's hope that that doesn't kill any of the grass. <laughs> so, Essie, can you pass oh, me sure. this one? The next one is my pick. It's a Chardonnay from southeastern Australia. It is a Chardonnay, which generally I would not go go for. Not that I hate Chardonnays, but it's just it's not my preference per se. Which glass would you like to? Have? I'll do it right there. I was going to bring the dump bucket, but then it was like, wait a second, we're going to be, we'll be outside. We're going to be And uh, if you've watched the show for well over nine years now, uh, we don't normally do a lot of Chardonnay shows because it's not my favorite, but I do like some Chardonnays. This I think is a steel fermented. Chardonnay. So I'm not sure what to expect from this. I'll tell you in one second if it's steel barrel. Steel. Yeah, I don't smell any oak on no this. No oak. If there's oak, it's very subtle. It's not bad. It, I mean, it's not. It's not bad. I like Ooh. it better than what we just. Right. What we just tasted. It's got a little bit of that butter popcorn thing. Not, a little bit. Not overwhelmingly, but that's not oak. It we says coconut vanilla. Mm -hmm. I got a little bit of coconut, coconut. vanilla. Which is weird because you would think that would be American oak, mm. um, but I think what this is is malolactic fermentation, which is just uh, when they convert malic acid into lactic acid, you get um, a byproduct called diacetyl. I've been over this a million times on the show, but I'll go over it again. That's the same thing that's in buttered popcorn, and it gives it that buttered popcorn flavor. But that is not the same thing as oak. Typically, oak is going to give you more of a vanilla and sometimes coconut. So I I'm feel not like convinced that this isn't. Some, there's there definitely vanilla some, on the there finish. There might be some American oak on this. And I know a lot of people watch the show, or just in wine general, like Chardonnays. Chardonnays, mm -hmm. especially women. women. Women tend to love Chardonnays. <laughs> and I just find, in general, they just a little too buttery and cloying for the summertime for mm -hmm. me to drink outside. But this is a moderate one. I'm not going to say this one's just going to California. Try it with the butter. Typically, yeah. when you guys want to try some popcorn, <laughs> i got to tell you, I don't like buttery Chardonnays, but if I'm going to have like shellfish, lobster, mm -hmm. that kind of thing, oh, I'd mm -hmm. love it with buttery. The buttery, the better. Like, give me that rum powder. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce it. Give me the buttery Chardonnays. And, uh, That's not bad. But yeah. It makes the butter yeah. pop, right? That, that really <laughs> is not bad. <laughs> really, again, you're talking diacetyl here and there. I mean, that's they just kind of melt together. <laughs> it works. I, I can't say it enough that it really makes a huge difference. It tastes much better, the popcorn with the Chardonnay. It's, it's really good. So that's something to think about in the movies in West Movie Arthur. night. Movie well, night. The movies in West Arthur right. are reopening and they serve wine and food there so you can get a bottle of Chardonnay with your popcorn. Mm -hmm. Wow, that, uh, what a huge difference. Changes your, your whole mind, your whole thoughts about Chardonnay have just been blown. <laughs> I, I know champagne and popcorn are supposed mm -hmm. to be a big thing too, but oh. I'll be honest with you, the Chardonnay with the popcorn was fantastic. Yeah. Really, really good, yeah. really good. So with the four whites, I think uh, we had a very good selection and really different tasting whites for Australia. And like I said, we've never, I, we've never really done an Australian show for a couple of reasons. Generally, even my own personal wine collection, I don't buy a lot of Australian wines. I don't wines. drink a lot of Australian wines at the all. The best wines are so price prohibitive, yeah. you just like, don't buy them that often. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, maybe I have to rethink a little bit. I mean, I, I, I think yours essay, mm -hmm. the Sommelier, yeah. it's, it's pretty <laughs> interesting. It's pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. And the Riesling, of course, which I love, I love a dry Riesling, was certainly comparable and as good as something you would get from Austria or Germany in regards to quality. So, or even the French Riesling. And I think it's also worth pointing out, uh, geographically, the, uh, I'm 
probably going to guess the Simeon and the Simeon blend are from the Margaret River. Yes, yes. That's way over. So if you're looking at the United States and comparing it, it would be mm -hmm. about where like San Diego is, mm -hmm. far far west, southern part of uh, of Australia. There. So if you're talking about Margaret River, that's a good segue. Yeah, this, this one. Yep. This one. So we'll go into our first yep. red. I'll let you handle this one. Mm. So this one um, I brought because I liked the name of it. <laughs> it's called Miles from Nowhere, and that is a Cat Stevens song. So one of my favorite artists. Can you just give me a Cat splash Stevens. Of rinse the white out. Now I want you to oh. tell me what oh. flavors you taste from this from this wine because there supposedly is a flavor in here that is native to okay. Australia. I'm messing up over Be here. Be careful, huh? some of that's getting in the glass. <laughs> <laughs> I might want to also add, as you said, a Cat Stevens, who I do enjoy, but also A Thousand Miles from Nowhere is also a Dwight Yoakam song. Ah, song. okay. So we cover both spectrums. Both well, there you go. And, uh, and this is 70% Cabernet and 30% Merlot. So. Oh, I like that smell already. Cab Merlot. That does smell good. It doesn't smell like Cab or Merlot. <laughs> Do you it's remember? We've, a, had, uh, we've had this before. Kind of like a blueberry, mm. almost. Because mm -hmm. typically, yeah, cabin blueberry. below or on the uh, the red slash black fruit end of the spectrum, this has gotten more of a. Any a, other flavors like after you? Do, you? do you remember having this? What's it called? We won this at one of our uh, the charity events, the oh. wine tasting charity events. I don't. And remember. we opened it there and oh, okay. drank it with some food. That explains why I don't remember. <laughs> I'm curious, though, if this is one of those kind of wines that's going to change drastically as it opens up. I don't think so. You think it's going to be pretty so. much the same? I, I'm, I'm, I only say that because I don't, I'm not sensing that there's much, maybe, maybe there isn't. There's not much beneath there that I'm getting other than just some blue fruit to it. Yeah. So yeah. the flavor, that's uh, Australian, eucalyptus. Eucalyptus. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's a... Uh, now... I that's don't get eucalyptus no on Koala this bears one, eat it. But <laughs> yeah, that, that's, uh, that's, that is a very common tasting note. If you're ever reading the tasting notes mm. on Australian wines, is eucalyptus. I don't, I've never had eucalyptus, so mm. I don't know if it's accurate or not. They said the leaves, like yeah, you can make, them. as long as you only do the leaves, you mm. don't want the oil, because the oil's deadly, supposedly, so just be careful if you're yeah. doing and it. And the heat makes a huge difference, difference on most Australian wines because of the, the intensity mm. of the sun. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, it's, that's yeah. why it's so unique in regards to a lot of different varieties. But I like this. Yeah. They, 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 I think I it's very pleasant. It, I would call, I don't, because I don't know what eucalyptus is, I would call it more of like a minty quality. Right. Not like spearmint, but just right. kind of like a... Um, just a slight herbal minty uh, quality to it. It's good though. It's, but I didn't come on the price point from California of the uh, Chardonnay. The Chardonnay is about ten to twelve dollars uh, the Mali Point, mm -hmm. which is available locally at Twenty Wine. Um, and I think this was like fifteen. Fifteen. Mm -hmm. This is certainly uh, you can drink this in the summertime, springtime, summertime. Um, I, I like it. I think it's good. And again, they're uh, they're doing just like they did on the Margaret River with the whites, they're trying to do the Bordeaux thing with uh, Cabernet and Merlot. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm going to have to guess that there must be something about the climate there that's similar to Bordeaux that would allow them to do that, or they're just wanting to be Bordeaux. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, and this is the 2019. 30% mm -hmm. so Merlot. And 70 cap. This is a certain, certainly a drinkable red wine um, for any time of year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, so if I was going to have like a, a, a thick, rare steak, I would probably reach for like a Napa Valley cab. If I was going to have a hamburger, this would be an excellent choice be to good go with. with barbecue, like, too. Yeah, or barbecue, summer. yeah. We had a plate of ribs Something right like now. that. Something a little more tame, uh, but yeah, mm. this is good. I, I would give this one a thumbs up. I don't sure. Can you drink this? Where's this one from, Jesse? Uh, where did you get this one? Uh, this was Total Wine. This was Total Wine. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Very good. Rocky, I don't know if you remember this, but I feel We're like... We're just burning right through this. <laughs> <laughs> we learned about this when we took our, our level two WSET. Um, screw caps used to be considered kind of, you know, subpar, but it's actually pretty big in Australia. It is. They actually uh, originated in the Clare Valley, was the first uh, region to do screw caps. And obviously it's taken off if you get... Uh, New Zealand, pretty much anything you get mm -hmm. out of New Zealand, most of what you get out of Australia is going to be screw cap. It's it is just a, it's a better way to do it. You know, you don't have to worry about mm -hmm. getting a cork wine. 
it, it's got a stigma attached to it, but there really shouldn't be a stigma attached to it. I think the only thing, and we discussed this with Jim back when he was on uh, years ago, is screw caps are so relatively new. How will they hold up in 10, 15, 20 years right. is really what the question is. With the, the reaction of the wine inside and so forth, I think that's what really nobody really knows for sure. How long could you actually store a bottle with a screw? Theoretically, I guess forever. I mean, it's the it's the air that's already in the bottle when you're aging it that causes that uh, reaction to occur, uh, and so it, it's it's going to be the exact same as with a cork, except you don't have to worry about getting a corked wine. I mean, cork right. corks tend to um, attract if if in particularly they use bleaching agents, and so. Um, there's a there there's something that happens where you it's called corked wine it's called uh, two four six trichloroanoside is the technical <laughs> name for it but it's just where chlorine um, reacts with the oxygen and over time in the bottle and you and you open it up and it's going to smell like a wet dog or wet cardboard or it could just if it's a little bit corked it could just take a wine that's normally a great wine and make it taste like almost nothing mm -hmm. uh, but you don't have to worry about that with uh, with the screw cup so. Very dry. I'm a fan of the, and I, uh, I'm also a fan of not having to go grab, right, grab the thing right. to, to open it with, you know. So, is this the one we brought? Yes, it is. Okay, so you want to tell them a little bit. So about this it? is from Barossa. <clears throat> this is right next to the Eden Valley. Uh, Barossa and McLaren Vale are kind of like the two regions in southern Australia that are the most famous. <laughs> I would have to say 90% or more of the wine that you get from Australia come from Barossa and McLaren Vale. Um, it's just ripe for growing Shiraz. And so this is 51% Shiraz, 33% Cabernet, and 16% Petit Verdot. Petit Verdot, and that's why I got this one, because I saw that Petit Verdot, I was like, wow, I, I wouldn't think about Petit Verdot. That's Shiraz wrong. Shiraz. Shiraz. <laughs> Shiraz. <laughs> Um, the Petit Verdot is a, a blending grape, very minor blending grape in the Bordeaux region. A lot of it used in California. They're making straight Petit Verdots a lot in California now. So I was kind of curious what it, what it would taste like because typically in Barossa, you're getting just Shiraz or you're getting Shiraz and Cab blends. And so I haven't tasted it yet. It smells good. It does. It's, it's dark. And the color is really dark. Really nice. it, it's very intense to me. It's kind of like a punch to the mouth. Hey, Sandy, can you tell me what the alcohol content is of that over there? Uh, no, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see it? It's probably on the front. Up uh, front. I don't even know what the... Oh, this is 2016, so it should be tamed down a little bit. Oh, it's in the back on the imported it's, area. I'm going to guess it's around 15%. I don't see it. Probably. Oh, yeah, 14.5. Yeah. yeah, okay, so that, that's, that's a lot. Sense, so this is 13.9. You, our, our whites that we started off with were all in the 13 range, I believe. Then S one well, that's yours. 13.9. 13, so I think this is the strongest thing so far. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, and this is why I don't drink a lot of Australian wines, yeah. because they are so in your face. They are very in your face. And when you're in the mood for that, it's great. And that's going to be uh, the middle of January for me. That's not going to be right yeah. now. Uh, it's not a bad wine at all, but it is, it's, it's strong. Midwinter sitting in front of the fire. Yes, this is a yeah. cold weather mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, this <laughs> is kind of singing ironic. Christmas carols. It's made in Australia, so they're drinking their wine. It's never cold in Australia, so it's like, uh, you know, they make wine that's going to be drunk by them. They stay indoors mm -hmm. because of the snakes well, and the sharks <laughs> yeah, right. and the spiders. I guess it's winter so. there right now, huh? No, I guess it would be fall <laughs> there. Right and now. what's the price point of this one? Uh, this one was right around the $20 price. What price price price? Uh, it tries your mouth out. It, it does, it, which I like. I like that. Yeah. So our last red, I can't believe we got through seven, but that's awesome. And we're still standing. We are still, we're still sitting. Sitting. Is a, a <laughs> wine name that's befitting of our show, Rocky, for all these years. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> Big Mouth Cap, as I believe is what it is. And it's a great looking bottle. It's a great name. And now, when it's something that's called Big Mouth, it better have a big flavor. So. Right. Who knows what that's going to be? We're going into this blind, so we're going to see what this is going to be like. I think this is a, was it Eastern Australia or South? Does it say on the bottle there? My guess would be Southeastern, Southeastern Australia. Yeah. It's got a brownish color. I know, doesn't it? It's almost coffee like. Yeah. Sorry about that. Oof. Yeah, that looks like uh, almost like an Italian wine. Wow, it's kind of bricky. Thank you. Oof, I was not expecting it to smell like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
What is this? It's just a blend? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's cab. Straight cab. Yep. Okay. It smells like blueberries to me. What does it smell like to you? <sighs> Not blueberries. Not <laughs> I like this. I, I like oh, it. Maybe blackberry. This, this is this yes. is more standard cab like sure current blackberry kind of thing. But there's something it's else fruity. there. It's got coffee on it, yeah. So this is probably oak. Oh, I like that. Chocolate mocha coffee. Thing. I do like that. So I could ask Rock, and you and Sandy are both pretty proficient in your wine tastings. If you tasted this blind, is this more like a California cab? If I tasted this blind, I would probably say that this is California, probably like Sonoma County. That would, that would be my best guess. I would it's, say California. I, I wouldn't he, say Napa. He gets down to regions. I can't do that. Well, I wouldn't say Napa just because Napa, Napa's, there's something distinct about Napa cab. They tend to be overly oaked. Um, some of your more um, less oak, like I really like this. Yeah. This, this is really good. This is, this is I very say, reminiscent. It, it of, is really nice. And, I, and for people who watch the show, if you do buy Australian wine, you always try to go towards Barefoot Bubbly or uh, what's the other one? Uh, Yellowtail. Stay away from those. Mm -hmm. Try, like I said, these are all different varietals. That's mm -hmm. what you want to look for. Uh, yeah, if you like that Barefoot Bubbly, if you like the uh, Yellowtail, that's fine. But look at these. And try some of these because I think you might be surprised. You might yeah. be surprised. So, as we're winding down for the last couple minutes, doing. Where and price point? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Sandy. <laughs> that is also from Total Wine, and that's between $9 and $10. Okay. It's, okay. Actually, it's very good. Yeah. I like that. Which I'm going to rate that's as my a favorite. And I'll remember the name. For the red, I think that's my favorite. For so I'm gonna pick uh, the Riesling. That's a tough one. I, I'm kind of torn between the Riesling and the Simeon because I like them both. Um, it's it, God. It's, it, it's like trying to pick between chocolate and vanilla ice cream. Mm. Like, it, what are you in the mood for that day? But I guess I, that, that Chardonnay is my favorite. Especially, is it? especially having it, it with, with, popcorn. with the popcorn. Yeah, yeah. Got a huge difference. Man. Yeah, huge difference. I, I'm probably gonna put the the Riesling as my favorite mm -hmm. on the whites. And then on the reds, maybe the Big Mouth, which is interesting because it was the least expensive, right? I think the Big Mouth is going to be the dark I like the Big Mouth. I like the Big Mouth for the red, the Semillon for the white. It's got a yeah. real chocolatey nice. kind of just a weird... It's good. Well, our big party is coming oh. up uh, in about a week, uh, the Australian theme wine party, <laughs> and we're going to have a lot more Australian wines. Unfortunately, we can't film that because it'll probably be illegal. <laughs> it's going to be so decadent. Mm. But i got to be honest with you, I'm going to try to, I think the Big Mouth is going to make another appearance in the yeah. Australian wine tasting. Yeah. And I think one of these, one or two of these over here are going to make another appearance in the wine tasting. So uh, looking forward to that. And it's good to be back to normal. Guys, yes, we should right? announce today they lifted the mask mandate. That's a like, big news today. For vaccinated For vaccinated. For, yes. If you have the microchip, I'm sorry, the vaccination, <laughs> you're allowed to not wear a mask it. anymore. All right, so we're winding down. I want to thank both Essie for coming in and bringing your bottles of wine. I want to thank Sandy for coming down. I know you had a busy day. Rocky, you were out in Boston today. Thank you for uh, coming back in time to a film today. I had to stop a couple times and get a grocery bag filled with gasoline. So it was really tough. <laughs> So until Not next time, and who knows where we're going to be, keep all of us in your wine cellar. <laughs>